Today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we have a go in the Kia Stinger GT. Now we may be about the last people to review this. That's okay. I remember when the reviews first came out for it, um, but I don't, I remember them coming out, don't remember what people said. And that's good because we have some very strong takes on this. What are they? That's what you find out next on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So the Kia Stinger GT was a very long hyped vehicle and understandably why. It's, it's an important vehicle for Kia as they are trying to, or at least making noises about trying to get out of the, the lack of a better term, lowest common denominator selling, -ish, selling uh, uh, strategy. Uh, most, at least around here, pretty much what you see about Kias is sale 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 deal 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 and especially towards your you know sub 620 credit score kind of people that's fine yeah, you know you need to find your niche um and it's unfortunate that kia is really targeting that market in the sense that their vehicles have generally been pretty good uh, usually get a lot of value for money in fact the kia soul is still one of the favorite vehicles that we've driven oh, no matter which generation you're talking about, current or previous, it's, it's just a great vehicle. Um, the Optima, I think, is, is an excellent vehicle as long as you don't get too crazy on the uh, on the options and start pricing it up. But if you can get one for, you know, 30 and under, it's a great value for a four-door family sedan. Well, here with the Stinger, they've, they've gone for a... Uh, gone for a bit of a stretch really targeting the Germans with this one with this five door coupe hatch thing uh, and I don't say that derogatory it's just like it's not a sedan it's not a coupe it's a five but you know traditional five door hatch is your not this right more like a a5 sportback is really the direct competitor to this so can it take on the Germans we're gonna get to that. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. And here and and we've got a list of talking points just to make sure we hit on all of them because as we were driving, we kept writing notes down about all kinds of different things that we noticed, more so than a lot of other vehicles. Um, let's let's get the negatives out of the way first. Because I think though, there's some there's some big ones in here. There's some very big ones in here. Um, first and foremost, the interior. It's nice, but it is about what you'd expect in a thirty thousand dollar Optima. When you get to this price point, which as tested is uh, just a hair under forty nine thousand dollars doesn't quite match up to what you come to expect at this price level. Again, it's not bad. There's nothing inherently wrong with anything here other than the fact of it just feels not quite up to spec for the price. A couple other things. No cooled seats in this. And again, at 50 grand, you're looking, you know, that should be sort of one of those standard things. And in fact, it's standard in Kia models significantly less expensive to the, than this. And also given the fact that most of the week that we've had this vehicle, it's been in the upper 80s and lower 90s and it's a leather interior, that first initial few minutes when you get in and the seats are warm, it would be nice. Um, and cooled seats are always good because then you don't have to run the air conditioning as hard either. But, you know, that's that. As far as driving dynamics, they're okay. Um, one thing that really sticks out is that the turning radius on this thing sucks. Uh, it just does. Uh, you try and pull a quick Yui, uh, count on at least a three-point turn. I didn't measure it, but it feels like it's well over 40 feet. Uh, it's, it was a bit shocking the first time we tried to pull, out, pull a Yui off. So this thing has start-stop on, on it, as most vehicles do these days. 
and the actual engagement of start and stop is not bad. It, you know, again, it just there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it seems to be you know on par. The one thing we did notice with the stop start though is, and especially because it's been warmer, is about 20 seconds in when it shuts off, you can feel and I hate to say the word smell, but it's the right term. The air conditioning just goes away. It starts blowing almost warm air and then it kicks back on so I don't know if the battery in this is not adequate enough for the start stop to stay uh, running with it off especially with uh, with a load with the air conditioning running or not I don't know didn't really look into that and it's not one of those things that uh, is often given in the facts and figures is the is the separate battery if it has one for start stop but um, that's one of the things we noticed. Now, I'm not gonna call this one quite a negative, it's more of a question mark, and please let us know in the comments. At a $50,000 vehicle with a hatch, right, should that hatch be motorized? In the sense that you click it to open it, should it have an automatic rise feature in it? Pretty much every crossover and SUV at this price level would. There's not a lot to compare this to again, so. I don't know. Is that good? Bad? I don't know. It'd be nice, I guess. Uh, it would play into that key of value thing, but then again, it might be a lot of weight and complication. And uh, I can understand either way. Fuel economy on this. Big disappointment. Um, you know, this is a 335 horsepower twin turbo V6. We'll get the right number in there for you, uh, just to be to let you know. But the fuel economy has not been good at all. Uh, running around in town, it's 15, 16, on the highway, low 20s, and that's significantly less than what the EPA says. Again, just a, a, we saw a little bit of that in a recent test of an Infiniti uh, Q60 with its twin turbo V6, where the fuel economy numbers were really not up to spec and we're seeing again here and not really trying to drive it hard or anything special it just it just is so uh, interesting data point i guess but yeah the, the the fuel economy not not so great so one of the things that we really noticed and and this really helped us clue in on our conclusion to this but it's it's kind of the last negative we want to touch on here <clears throat> is what you is at low speeds um, whether it's in and out of the driveway or pulling Michigan lefts or u-turns or whatever the steering wheel and more the steering shaft feel plasticky and I, and I, I say that very seriously like, it's not something you notice in most vehicles, the connection, right? I mean, the steering wheel, steering wheel, and you just turn. And, but it feels, especially on tight turns, it feels plasticky, not metal. That's, hmm, that's a thing, right? Um, and maybe you won't notice it, you wouldn't even think about it until the point of someone points it out to you, right? So, that's one of the things you'll have to notice and look for when you drive this. And, it's just not something I've ever felt in any other vehicle, which is why it sticks out and why it was like burned into my mind of like, ooh, that's, that's interesting. So, so not all is bad. In fact, there's a lot that's good about this. The styling is very nice. It's well done. It's not amazing, but proportionally it looks very good. The nose is Kia's nose and it'd be nice if they did something a little different, but from say the headlights back, I like this a lot. It looks good. The interior room is excellent. I can easily at 510, 510 and a half, easily sit behind myself and have plenty of room. The seats are comfortable back there. You have plenty of leg room, plenty of head room. The hatch area is pretty good. Um, we stuck quite a bit of stuff back there at one point. Uh, suitcase and um, some other stuff that we uh, we were doing just for testing purposes. Sorry, I don't have any photos of that. It was just something I wanted to do really quick. So the hatch area is pretty good on this as well. The infotainment system is fine. Um, 
as far as how it operates and the screen, it's, again, I'd like more knobs, but that's a personal thing. But in general, the layout is good. You can get to pretty much whatever you want. Now, the Harman Kardon stereo system in here is pretty solid. I do have some nitpicks, but that's because I'm picky about audio systems. So it has good bass, but maybe just a little boomy. And the highs are just missing that little bit on top. Some people call it a sparkle, some people call it airiness, maybe a little bit of both, but it's really good. Um, it's better than a lot of other systems in vehicles that are more expensive than this. Let's circle back to the motor. Again, good power in this thing. And I'm not sure if this is the torque management, um, or electronic controls in it, or just how we're feeling the acceleration and the gearing. In first gear, from a stop or slow roll, you, you punch it, it feels good. But when second and third gear, as it shifts into it, you really feel that torque shove. Um, much more than I expected to, and it's quite good. The other thing that we noticed um, is, like most vehicles, when you change the drive mode selection, it's going to default back to comfort, or whatever its standard is. In this case, it's comfort. But changing from comfort to sport, I didn't notice a big difference in ride, but what we did notice is a big difference in throttle connection. So in comfort, it can feel, just because it's a little laggy in how it shifts, um, that it almost has torque, uh, turbo lag. And in sport, which I actually do need to put that back into it, uh, it feels far more connected. Uh, the it, I'm not gonna say it feels naturally aspirated at that point, but it does not feel like it has a lag or like a, from a muscle car standpoint, like a big torque converter where it's like, it revs and revs and revs and when it catches, then you move. It's a little bit what it feels like in comfort mode, where in sport mode, the throttle is far touchier, not in a bad way, just way more connected. Like you just lean into the throttle and you're going versus that little bit of lag. The other thing that's very good in this thing are the brakes. They, once you get used to them a little bit, um, they feel a little bit like a hybrid in the sense of the initial tip in doesn't really feel like it catches a lot and then it sort of progressively comes in. But when you do need to get on the binders, this thing has got good ones. It'll haul you down very quickly. We had an idiot pull out in front of us, like they were staring right at us and, you know, looking right at us as we're going down the road and they decided to pull out and had to jump on the binders. It worked quite well. So the key is Stinger GT. What do we think? In general, it's a good first effort. The problem is, is that in today's market, good usually isn't good enough. And you may not get a chance at a second effort, which becomes a problem. I'm happy that Kia did something like this, that they took the risk uh, and went after it. And you see the potential, but you also see the lack of experience in this category. What it really boils down to is this. With the Kia Stinger here, you really feel the, you feel and you understand and you see and you experience that the roots and the bones of this car come from an economy company, a, 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 economy car company. Just there's everything about it. It's nice, but, but look, but go drive something like an Audi A5 Sportback, which we're saying is the, uh, really the direct competitor to this. And very quickly you understand the difference where this feels of, as it comes from an economy car company that's stepping up, the Audi A5 feels like it comes from a vehicle that's been building luxury vehicles for a very long time. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive.